even started. These people are very confused. They want photos from church. That man, very confused. Very Hello. Hello. Mr. Dong, good evening. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, everyone. I I request for some host rights so that I can help. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. Actually, I have two gadgets connected because my internet jumps off from one to the other. So that should be fine. Yeah. Uh, in the meeting, no balancing equation. Yeah. I don't know if we will have to mute members compulsory or we'll each mute ourselves. I think for the beginning, okay. let's, let's mute everyone on entry so that uh, uh, after giving the instructions, then we can unmute. Uh, people can unmute and mute, uh, then otherwise, <laughs> it helps. Then also we need to request that teachers that have their phones that are not named to, to rename them from ITL to the teacher's name or the school name. Because I can see ITL S16 plus name themselves. Even the person with the Technospark 7. <laughs> just say what's Spark 7. Uh, Mr. Jacob, please, if you can name your gadget with uh, your second name. The gentleman, with the, the person with ITL S16 class, if you can give your gadget your real name. There's also someone connecting with ITL P15. If Gideon, you can uh, 
Gideon, you can give your gadget a second name. It is always nice if you can get the second name. Let's connect with the both names. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will welcome you to the to the meeting. We are still going through uh, the connection phase and waiting for the rest of the members to get on. But uh, I kindly request that uh, we connect uh, our gadgets or with our real names. Uh, the, the sure way of renaming your gadget is by clicking the three dots on your phone or computer. You, you right click, you left click, I think, and then uh, it will give you options and you can rename yourself. If you don't feel comfortable with your name, you can name your, you can identify your gadget with your school name. So I request uh, the person with TechnoSpark 7 to rename their gadget. And like I said, when you click in, uh, when you put a cursor in your photo, your gadgets on the top right, in the top right of it, there are three dots, you click in them and then there's a list of what you can do. But we right now we ask you to rename your, your gadget if you're connecting with a gadget that is not uh, with any name or which has a name that does not relate with you. So for example, we have people connected as ITLP15. If you can uh, rename that gadget, we also have ITEL S16, if you can rename your gadget, that makes everything easy. Um, even when you have questions, we, um, or we have a response, we get to you with your name, not with the name of the gadget you are using. So that is it for now. Uh, we are going through connectivity. I don't know how much time the the chairman of the, the meeting is giving for this, but yes, uh, as we wait for the rest of the members to get on. Uh, thank you very much. Over to you, Mr. Bingo. Okay. Um, thank you, Brian, for the guidance. Ladies and gentlemen, we will give ourselves one more minute for whoever is connecting, and then we start. As uh, I request any volunteer to lead us in a word of prayer, so you can raise your hand if you are ready to lead us in a word of prayer. I can see Bonne SS eh? Juba. Is that Juba in Southern Sudan? Bonne. Anyone to pray for us? Brian, are you still hearing me? Uh, yes, Mr. Dunga, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. Any volunteer to lead us in a word of prayer? Josephine is on, maybe she can pray for us. Ah, okay. Okay, Josephine, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, all our head in prayers. Jehovah God in the heavens, we come before you are thrown this evening. We first, first of all we want to thank you for the gift of life. All of us connected, owe it to you. We were able to wake up 
have a fruitful day and we are gathered here today. So Jehovah, we know that the reason we are gathering here is not for personal gain, but to help nurture our young ones so that they can bring future development in our country. So Jehovah, with everyone gathered here, in particularly the teachers, we want to thank you for their presence, but most importantly, for the sacrifice made by those who are taking the leadership. So give all of us wisdom so that uh, when we discuss, when we make decisions, it's not only based on a human wisdom, but the wisdom that comes from you as the almighty creator of everything visible and invisible. So we want to ask your Holy Spirit to guide us throughout this meeting and bring this prayer to you in Jesus' name, your son, our reigning king. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Josephine, and uh, thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to welcome you to this uh, gathering, this meeting, the first of its kind. Um, we did share with you the program in the WhatsApp group, but we can still go through it again. We've had the prayer and I would like to welcome everyone. I would like to welcome our friends from uh, Victoria Seeds Limited. I would like to welcome uh, Brian who's connecting from far. He will tell us where he's connecting from. I'd like to welcome all the friends here, the schools uh, far and wide. I would like to welcome all of you to this session. We'll have um, a brief about what the school gardening, gardening program is, go through the rationale and some objectives. And these are items you can pick and use with your head teachers. We then get introduced to Victoria Seeds. Some of you have been hearing about Victoria Seeds. Today you have a chance to hear what Victoria Seeds is. And then we'll have uh, a sharing of an experience, a case study of uh, the garden project, school garden project at uh, Gayaza High School, and that will be presented by Brian. And we'll have Q&A, and we'll also ask you to share what your excitement about this project is, but also what your fears might be and we hope that we'll be closing um, two hours later. So I'd like to thank you for coming and hope that uh, our internet connectivity will give us the chance um, to move on. So straight away, without further ado, I will want to dive into um, what this program is all about, or project is all about, and we have called it the School Gardens Project 2022. We shall be using the short form SGP22 now and again, and I hope um, it will be easy for you to relate with. The background. This is an action taken from the proceedings of the annual schools farm camp 2021. Those who attended the farm camp, you could have heard a little bit about this, but we are taking an action from there. And the idea was initiated by Victoria Seeds Limited and the organizers of the farm camp to encourage agriculture education in schools. We therefore thank Gazai School, the hosts for that camp, Field of Hope was another organization that was in attendance at that camp, uh, the Holistic Learning Platform. And those discussions have gone on up to where we are. The promise was to mobilize 100 schools, of which we anticipate that 25% will be primary schools, and engage these to start up school gardens. Today, we have a registration from 114 schools and hope for full engagement with all of these schools going forward. The rationale is something you know very well, the state of education in Uganda. Many children start primary school, but very few actually end 
the secondary school sector. 28% of their children reach primary seven and of those who complete primary education, only 60% make a transition to secondary education. And statistics has it that about 35% complete. So you can imagine if 1 million students, children started P1, how many might end senior four? It has also been noted with concern that even those who get the chance to attend secondary education also come out when they are not well prepared for life and cannot fend for themselves. We actually thank the government that they have now thought about redesigning the curriculum. And I hope that the school gardens will be handy in supporting the new curriculum such that the status quo changes. Many writers have highlighted the fact that the graduates of our education system lack the best life skills such as creativity, teamwork, problem solving, taking calculated risks, confronting risks, communication, assertiveness, leadership, critical thinking, self-confidence, and are not empowered to start their own business as if the jobs cannot come by. So can the school garden in your uh, environment help to teach these? I think this is going to be the crust of the matter. When you are handling students within the project, is creativity being nurtured, teamwork, and all these things that we are talking about. This is the greatest challenge that you will have as you run these projects. And are we sure that even when the children who go through your hands do not continue, they can start a job because of the skills you gave them through the project. So that's why we are standing in this space to ensure that we do the best on this program. So just running through the objectives of the project, the first objective is to practically expose youth to crop production in a safe, economic and sustainable way while preparing them for the world of work in agribusiness and agriculture. So it's no longer theory. We want to see the practical exposure. We are talking about crop production because our project has been designed starting from the crop end, but maybe we'll go into livestock in future. Second, to promote better nutrition through production of healthy, safe, and fresh crops to be consumed by schools. So will the project in your school promote better nutrition? Will you produce healthy and safe and provide fresh crops to be consumed by your school and the local community? This is the reason why we are standing into this gap. Third, to interest in school youth into pursuing agriculture as a business and professional agriculture related careers to support national agriculture development, economic growth and reduced unemployment. At the back of our mind, we want the students who are going through your schools, who are going through all our Ugandan schools to promote good agriculture in future, to select agriculture related careers, to participate in economic growth, and importantly, to reduce unemployment. Going forth with the objectives, there'll be a section for training for teachers and students. And we hope to facilitate education camps for teachers, both at the regional level and at the national level. Many of you have been participating in the Gaza High School Farm Camp. Some of you attended um, the Nyakasura Camp. Others attended the St. Mary's College Chisui Camp. So we are trying to see how do we diversify these camps so that they come lower to the regions and we get the teachers and students trained. It facilitated to enhance agriculture entrepreneurship, leadership and social skills. We'll also be documenting case studies of excellence from the schools so that we share these through the different technology platforms. So will your school be part of the case study? an excellent case study. 
That means we are going to be writing, we are going to be documenting, we are going to be sharing what we do, and we shall be selecting uh, excellent case studies and sharing them with people within Uganda and outside Uganda. Part of the objectives, there is community support to facilitate youth involvement in community development through agriculture activities that help improve individual nutrition and household income, such as community awareness campaigns about gardening and nutrition practices. Will the students come from your school and go home and transform their homes, their communities, go to their church groups and youth groups and present awareness campaigns, start up probably a community garden at home and train. This is something that you need to bring about. To develop community garden resource centers at the school level that will serve as model learning centers for other schools and community members. Will your school become a resource center for other people within your community for other schools. This is something we are looking forward to, and we hope that all this uh, will be possible. So ladies and gentlemen, just running through those, we shall share these documents within the WhatsApp groups so that we interact with them, we talk more about them, we develop them further, but also use them in your schools and as you engage other people. I can see there is a quick hand that has come up. We don't intend to take questions now, but uh, let's take this one. Technospark, I wish you could rename yourself. Technospark, Brian, are you? Uh, yes. There is uh, the person, but I think they are, they are failing to get the audio. So you can see that uh, they are connected with their video, but not the audio. So oh. I, yeah, that's, that's the challenge. And uh, I don't know if we can, we can't assist them because we don't know their name. So they might not think we are referring to them and stuff like that. Okay. Do we have something in the chat? I can see. Uh, for now, not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. So friends, that was just an introduction to where we want to go. The challenges ahead, the expectations, we shall be breaking them down objective by objective so that we look for activities that feed into a given objective. When we talk about teaching practically, what are the activities in school that are teaching practical work. When do your students go to the garden? What do they do in the garden? How do they do it? Are you sure that they're gaining the skill that will make them entrepreneurs, that will make them educators, that will drive them to support learning in their home states? Okay. So each of those objectives, we shall break it up together in discussions. Different schools will have different activities, but feeding into the same objective. If we are talking about community support, what are you doing in your school through your garden to provide community support? How are you doing it? And those are the excellent case studies that we shall be picking from you. There'll be a lot of training, ongoing training. Unfortunately, most of the training will be online because we don't, first of all, have the capacity to bring everybody together. When you look at our map, and we will share this in the WhatsApp group, we are coming from different districts. We don't have the capacity as yet to bring everybody together for a workshop on a farm but we can come together for two hours like we've come today so that we can engage and discuss. With that in mind, allow me ladies and gentlemen that we move on on our program and welcome Victoria Seeds Limited 
Josephine and Tim. Um, I saw Maurice. I did um, give him co-host rights. I don't know if there is anyone else, Josephine, who needs the co-host rights uh, in your presentation. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Elias Bambale should have joined, but he was at a funeral. I'm not so sure if he has joined because I don't see him yet. But uh, okay. Elias, are you there? I don't think he's there, but uh, I think I can share my presentation and then we can take it up from there. And Maurice Please can go just... ahead. Okay. Okay. So um, can can you all see the presentation? I should start the video. So can we all see the uh, myself I can see the can we see it? I am seeing the, the presentation myself. Yeah, um I'm sorry the I think the alignment changes, huh? when it's being shared, but bear with me, yeah? yeah. So as you can see, it's the headed, the case for investing in the school garden project. I think uh, Mr. Dungu has corrected it to read school gardens, <laughs> yeah, project. So uh, uh, the presentation we have, the outline why we believe as a business we should invest in this school garden project and then of course you come from a different background so i need to let you know about victoria seeds uh what are the success records we can demonstrate up to now and then moving back to the project what do we see is our role and what success would look like for all of us not just victoria seeds huh? So that is what I'll take you through. And uh, I'll try to limit it like to 15 minutes so that we have enough time for discussions, if any. So to us as a, a company, uh, a seed company, the reason we believe uh, we should invest in this school garden project is one, as you can see, agriculture sector remains the biggest employer, particularly for women and youth. And, uh, but overall, 73% of Ugandans <laughs> work in the agriculture sector. So that is um, uh, one major reason why it makes, uh, it makes strategic and also uh, economic and social sense to invest in, in that sector. Then you see Uganda has the youngest population that is common knowledge at least uh, 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 over 70%, 78% are less than 30 years. And, uh, but uh, <laughs> the sad reality is we also have one of the highest unemployment rate in Sub-Saharan Africa. That's from the MAIF strategic plan. And when you Google, it shows you that youth unemployment in Uganda is between 64 to 70%. They say for every 9,000 jobs, there are 400,000 youth graduating annually uh, and all of them competing for that job. So it means you work hard as teachers, but in that you are very class. As you look at them, just know that either one or 2% of your students will get a job. I think that is very disheartening. So that is why as uh, businesses, we need to find other ways of empowering them to be self-employed. And I think that is something that is not only for Victoria Seeds, but I believe uh, for as a country, we should come together, not just business, but also those, whether it's development partner, those involved in social work, all of us to empower them. Then there's an issue of malnutrition that almost 30% of Ugandan children below the age of five are stunted. In other words, they appear too short for their age. Age, That means like 35% of Ugandan children suffer from some form of malnutrition. That's not 
a small statistics. That is a real concern for future economic development. Because you know, when children are stunted or malnourished, it affects their academic performance in their younger years and also therefore in their ad adult life. So it's a huge challenge. Then, then coming to the agriculture production itself, for us in the seed industry, statistics have shown that uh, growth has been stagnant for close to 50 years. Although the population has grown like our population 50 years ago, if it was 10 million, we are now 40 million. It means whether it is bush beans, whether it is soya beans, the yield should have also gone four times to match population growth. But you find that our yields have not increased with the population. In other words, our bean, our maize yield does not jump like from if it was like five, five tons, so five times five to 25 tons per, he per hectare. No, it hasn't. So that is a challenge. And uh, it means there has to be investment in either helping the productivity go up, even though we may not match the population, but uh, our productive potential should be supported to go up. And we cannot wait until someone reaches tertiary level, tertiary level with a certificate, diploma, or even first degree in agriculture. No, anybody. It cuts across anybody can become an agriculturalist. So I think it is, that is why I believe that uh, it should be started at a young age. Then empowering the youth, like I, I, I just mentioned, yes, it starts at a young age so they can start uh, seeing the opportunities available. Either they can join the academia, they can uh, pursue professional, a career and become the next breeders. So from research to food at the table, there are so many opportunities, primary production, value addition, and uh, digital, digital extension. Right now, there are so many opportunities, but you don't wait and empower them at a later age. You start empowering them now. Then uh, uh, you also, uh, the, the fact is also that the average age of the African farmer, although I've not found the one of Uganda specifically, that the farmers are quite old. And it looks like the youth, even as I see, if they are given an opportunity, they rather become a border border rider than go into farming. And that is because when they were young, the mindset was culture is something that they most decide for. So I think those are the things that I believe this project will address. What I call mindset change. Uh, maybe the last bullet you can ignore for now. Those are for contributing to low productivity that we may not address ourselves. Yeah. So to yes, I'm still emphasizing. I'm still trying to to explain why we believe that uh, it is appropriate to invest in the school garden. So this shows the, this graph, although because of the PowerPoint, I don't know if I can make it smaller and clearer. Oh, it's not so clear. Some of it is cut off, but it shows the lower graph would have shown you that way back from 1965, the growth in agriculture production has been very low while urbanization, population growth has gone very, very high. So there is a mismatch and at all levels of society, there has to be some form of investment to get agriculture productivity growing. Yeah, then uh, evidence has shown that where there is investment in average yield, as you can see, I think when this presentation is shared on PowerPoint, you see it, you are, but clearly that where there is investment in quality seed, the yield goes up, but quality seed alone is not enough. As you well know, we have huge challenges in extension. I'm sure as teachers, you know that, that what you teach when you walk around in your communities, 
very little of it is being implemented. So we hope we can use these young ones to be like your foot soldiers to share that knowledge, not as a, a classroom knowledge, but practical skills. Yeah, this is also statistics of fertilizer use. As you can see, Uganda is uh, the second lowest Actually, in the whole world, it is the fertilizer use is so, so, so low compared to other countries. But that is something which can come out as an opportunity. It's true that uh, so it's easier to uh, apply inorganic fertilizer, but also through this project moving forward, uh, we could be creative and find other organic fertilizers that uh, communities can, can use. Um, and then, then uh, I'm moving to the slide to tell you more. Victoria Seeds, who are we? We are actually one of the older seed companies. And although we are, our business is primarily seed trade, getting quality seed to the farmers, we believe that our business is managing risk because pros, crop production in Uganda largely depends on rain fed agriculture, we are all cognizant of the changing climate. It brings new challenges. And also those challenges include sometimes invasive pests and diseases. So what we do, we have to provide more choices in our seed varieties so that uh, the farmers can cope with drought. The varieties should have early mature, uh, should uh, mature early then of course the yield should be better than what is on the market and uh, disease resistance. And the last bullet, it's very important that as we speak of employment, we don't just push varieties for the farmer's pot, as I always say, but it must also have industrial use and high nutrition so that it can address uh, the malnutrition that I mentioned for example, when I see that these children are stunted and we know that in the seed industry for long ago, we have the quality protein maize. I think many of you know it as Nalongo and the protein in that maize is higher than all other maize. So if I were government, I would have put it as a must that all schools in Uganda should only serve porridge made from longer five and maybe fortified with other vitamins. But those are things that uh, we can only talk about now. It is out of our mandate, but it helps you appreciate that as we get products to farmers, we are also looking at the industrial use and the nutritional value. So we believe that uh, business can only thrive where society also thrives. And from the very beginning, when I tell you about our genesis, our first farmers were from internally displaced people's camp in Oluwal, present day Amuru district, because we believe that part of building good sustainable business is to establish safe income secure and peaceful society. So because of that, we strive to develop communities in the area where we operate and we focus primarily on empowering rural women and the youth. So of course, our core purpose is to continue to grow as a business, working with uh, communities. And now I take and be one of Africa's leading agro solutions company. So this is just to tell you about our, style, our journey we started in 2004 as a struggling startup with a team of five people. And then um, we, uh, we were able to establish a research and development center at Kawanda and later commission a seed factory in Gulu. Actually, I was privileged to get the first lady to commission it. Later, we expanded our product range to include crop protection products and uh, we thereafter established a seed factory in Masindi and even uh, registered a subsidiary in South Sudan. Although because of the war, I think uh, we realized it was risky and we kind of shelved it. 
So we are presently at Namave Industrial Park. That is where our head office. We try to expand also our geographic footprint in the regional market and move into Rwanda. Now we are trying to um, expand into value addition and we hope to go into not just processing maize but also in the fish feed sector. So as of now, we say we are one of the leading houses. We are promoting over 90 seed varieties for cereal crop, for legume crop, for vegetable crop, oil crops, and a little bit of pasture seed. Yeah, we have worked with uh, the office of the prime minister implementing the, the Northern Uganda Social Action Fund 3. So they were expected to get uh, NUSA 4, but uh, I think uh, it, it hasn't yet materialized. So we did succeed in getting a grant for building capacity in feed fish processing, and we hope we can move forward. So that is oh, the building Gulu branch. It is, um, it's not showing it very well. I don't know why. And then Masindi, they, they actually to just show you what a, a seed factory is. It is simple. It is a machine that uh, is for processing and, um, and grading and then packing. And that is our head office. And then uh, about us, I would like to share access to seed index. Now this seed index was established by, I, I believe uh, uh, it was established but by the government of Netherlands and maybe financed by the Bill and Gates Melinda Foundation. The purpose was to try and identify companies that are doing their best, not just for, they didn't just look at the companies that were making the most profit or the company that, that was making the most, uh, the most maybe sales in terms of volume. They didn't look at volume and they didn't look at the bottom line. What they looked at, which are the innovative companies that are doing their very best to get seed from their, from their, from their production point to the farmers? Who are the creative companies? And you can see there that this was for Eastern Africa. And you can see that uh, Victoria's seed was like the number one in Uganda, though the east-west seed, I think eventually they registered in Uganda like last year. But as in terms of a Ugandan company, that was a major plus for the country that we really took that position of being creative and doing very creative things to ensure that seed gets to the farmer where they are. We don't just depend on agro dealer. And that's why we are excited about this partnership. And we believe it will make a difference in the livelihoods of the communities in terms of uh, the farming communities and the children who are part of that. So because of climate change, we have moved to promoting hybrid varieties primarily for maize and vegetables. This is, um, we have bred and released two hybrid varieties of our own, Victoria 1 and Victoria 2. But as of today, we have up to seven hybrid maize varieties and most of them are drought tolerant. Some of them uh, are from uh, Cal Rocking Agricultural Research Organization. I think one is from Naro and part of them are part of the products that were pushed by the Gates Foundation. So also we are trying to replace most of the vegetable seeds with hybrids, but you know that is a gradual process because even to a farmer seeing it, believing they cannot just exchange what they are used to with what they don't know. So that is work in progress. And we hope that the demonstration is a first step to help them see that there are better varieties and not just for the sake of pushing it as a business, but for the sake of helping them improve their productivity and income. These are some of the accolades 
you can look at that later and uh, I'll just maybe go the pictures. The, the, we are proud winners of the Yara Prize. That was 2007 for a green revolution in Africa. I think well, that was the first accolade we got. And uh, the person standing next to me is uh, uh, Adesina Akunimi. He's the president of the African Development Bank right now. He was a Yara Prize laureate with me. Then uh, this was, uh, as you can see, Oslo Business for Peace Award. At that time when the world, uh, you remember the collapse of the, of, uh, the, of the, actually the bank collapse of the, 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 the banks in way back in 2009 from Lehman Brothers to, to, to entire cascade. And that was primarily because they found that businesses focus only on the bottom line profits and it came at a high cost. So globally, they picked a few businesses that were not just looking at profit as the reason for their sole existence. And actually, I was so, so shocked at that time that I thought it was a hoax. When I got the email, I just thought someone was playing. Fortunately, the lady who worked in the Norwegian embassy, I know her. So I called her, I said, is it true that uh, that uh, Victoria Seeds has got an award. She said, yes, you do. And as you can see, it says, we, we, I, I was standing as an example for someone who was inspiring uh, the business community by because of engaging in socially responsible and ethically aware business practice. Eh? Yeah. This one, Africa Award for Entrepreneurship, that was, was primarily for empowering women. It was, uh, it was very interesting in Nairobi. And I think the one who came to give us was Sir Richard Branson. And I think uh, one uh, also when this was uh, the former president of the US, I was privileged to take a picture with them because they thought they were an example of um, of really what it takes to, to grow a business in, in difficult situation. So despite what appears to be, okay, despite the, the great success, there has to be challenges. So this is just for your information. What are some challenges that we are faced as a business? I start with the first one, financial products not adapted to the needs of agriculture sector. So some of you followed news, maybe you saw where Victoria C took Standard Bank to the, to the courts because they kind of transferred some of those assets I showed you to third parties to a minor without the due process. So it's a, it's a big challenge. So when we exported to Sudan, there was a delay in payment, then it builds out and they give you 120 days. So once you take like, maybe more than the 120 days, they stop the loan, they start building interest and then it goes on. So it's like a trap. So some of the other challenges is weak and limited availability of extension services, low mechanization, you know it, knowledge gap, you know that dependence on rain fed agriculture is a very, very sad case for Uganda. Then declining soil fertility, coupled with no application rate of productivity enhancing inputs. Sometimes it's not just about the soil fertility, crop protection products, especially the vegetables. They need management of the pest. They have to be sprayed, but the spray has to be, has to be well managed. Then high losses due to post-harvest mismanagement, and then of course, pest vectors, diseases. Then this was lead Uganda identified, but all of you know what happened at the Kenya border. Aflatoxin is a growing problem, especially as the weather changes, then our crops will not dry in time. And if they don't use mechanical drying, aflatoxin continue to be a problem. As a business, I see that uh, a bit, I feel frustrated because of the absence of national strategy for mitigating the impact of climate change. For example, the banks leave it to us and then the ministry leaves it to the farmer 
whether they get their bean crop or they don't get their bean crop, it is the farmer's problem. So sometimes it's a little bit frustrating, but it's good for you to know the ecosystem in which we work. But of course, there is plus in the, in the context of getting insurance for all the farmers. And I'm wondering if we will be able to get insurance for all the schools that are growing these crops. So let's see, we we'll give it a shot and see if it works out. This is just an example impact of climate change. I'm sure you are well aware of the fall army worm, how it ravaged, but so far it has been contained. Then this last, this slide uh, was to show the role of the partners. As Victoria Seeds, what do we see as our role? Of course, our primary role as a seed company is to provide seed garden kits. And we are, as you are aware, this is, uh, we are, this is voluntary, it's our offer because we believe in the project. So you bear with us if maybe it doesn't have as many crops as you want. But for the beginning, we thought these are the sample crops we could start with maize, bush beans, soya beans, and a range of vegetable seeds. Mm. Uh, uh, sorry for that, let me just, someone calling on a holiday. Yeah, a range of vegetable seeds, as you can see, uh, cabbage, tomato, eggplant, carrots, kale, and pumpkin. And uh, then we also or hope to, we, we are planning to offer one pump implement. We realize that many schools may not have the spray pump. And if they don't spray vegetable garden, we will never have a crop to demonstrate, or at least they have to be prepared. So that is what we'll be willing to offer. Then as a company, we are providing a chronomic information for productive farming. That will be nothing new, but it's important as a company like you as the, the teachers helping with the demo, you may not know the maturity period of the plan. So once you know, it helps you to plan. Then of course, we will work with you to offer extension support to schools that are close to our physical location. Because as Ms. We may not have the resource visit each and every one of you. Then, of course, it's very important that we support the and take us to what success looks like. So, to us, what will success look like? Uh, we should see demonstration gardens established using the VSL seed kits. And uh, uh, during this uh, school garden project, agronomic practices for productive farming is evident. And then success would look like when the school children learn by hands of home activities on the garden. And then very important that the field day is organized to showcase success and nearby parents are invited. I believe those nearby parents by default should be farmers or should be promoting farming. Then mindset change of the students. And uh, <clears throat> I think Mr. Dungu mentioned a, a lot more expounded on what I would say as mindset change. There are so many things that are involved. Like I told you the average age of the farmer, we need to get younger farmers, but also they should be empowered with skills that. Uh, enables them to become really business farmers at the end of their school going age. And then mindset change in seeing farmer, farming as something to celebrate, to be proud about, but it's not something that is degrading. And uh, mindset change in, um, in really believing that uh, they can generate their own employment if they master or learn skills from the school gardens project. So I believe it as it moves forward, we will gradually move from just producing crops to some form of value addition as hopefully other partners will come in. So with those few remarks, 
I wish to say thank you for your attention. The picture of our team is not seen. And uh, wow, I've taken double the 15 minutes. Mr. Dungo, apologies, I would like to end here. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine, um, for walking us through the big journey of uh, Victoria Seeds Limited. And I'm sure the members here have been listening in and they have quite a number of uh, questions for you, but we would like to request them to hold on to the questions until we finish the next presentation. I want to invite Brian. Brian, are you there? Over to you, Brian. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Dungu. Uh, good evening to all of your friends. Uh, kindly allow me share my, uh, my screen. Um, I'm going to, I hope uh, everyone can see uh, my presentation. Yes, um, once again, good evening to you all. My name is Brian Chibirige. Uh, I've been working with Gaza High School for the last seven years. And I was fortunate, I started as a volunteer there uh, shortly after my graduation from Chambogo University. Uh, then went on to be the assistant farm manager and uh, later on became the farm manager of the school farm while teaching uh, classes, but the classes were always very few. So I'm going to show, to talk to you about the school gardening projects, which uh, I was uh, key in implementing at Gaza High School. There were very many other projects, but I'm, for this, uh, for this uh, meeting, I'm going to stick to the gardening project. So it is a case study of Gaza High School. And uh, yes, so here is uh, the background. Um, the school gardening project uh, was, was started in 2013. Actually, it was in the month of August. I remember that time it was very dry. And then um, I had graduated. I had nothing to do at home, but I was living around the Gaza High School community. So I went to Mr. Dungu's office. Of course, I had done my school practice, the first one at Gaza. So I went to Mr. Ronald Dungu's office and asked him if there was any kind of employment I could get at Gaza High School. And then he had uh, a book from FAO. FAO had produced a book about school gardens and he had it on his desk and uh, he wanted someone who could help him coin out a small project, uh, start with a small project proposal and then uh, build on that. So he gave me the book and uh, in one week, I think we had developed uh, the school gardening program. And uh, we started with senior one students. There were about 250 students. So these students and we went, we had uh, half an acre of land uh, that we had allocated to the project. And uh, we divided these, uh, these students in um, groups of, uh, of three uh, to five then, and then we could give them a seed, allocate them a seed that we are going to plant, all seedlings that they were going to plant. And uh, this program was supported by the volunteer then, who was me, and then two teachers of agriculture. And then we had time, there were, other activities that students couldn't do. And then we could get uh, part-time workers and uh, it was funded by the school. I remember that time, the school, we bought seeds and a few uh, small equipment worth 150,000. I always tell people that the, the, the school, um, uh, school agriculture education program at Gaza High School started with a little 150,000. Of course, the farm was already there, but uh, engaging practically the students at the farm was started in 2013 or was revamped in 2013. We did, there were years when Gaza used to do that, but they lost it, but then we got it back in 2013. So the gardening project 
uh, was the, a pioneer strategy for practical teaching of agriculture at a school farm. But very key to note here is that by the time we started this project, at Gayaza High School, a school with 40 acres of farmland with a lot to show around, in the agriculture class of senior three, there were two students, and in the agriculture class of senior four, there were four, I think there were four students. So it was very important for us to start so we can change the mindset and then grow that subject, uh, the interest of uh, students in studying agriculture. Um, on the next slide, um, I'm going to talk about the methodology. So how did we take on the project? I've already mentioned that uh, in uh, we had a class, senior one, it was our major focus for vegetable farming. And I think it is still the major focus for vegetable farming at Gaza High School. We had students. Um, Brian, Brian, your slides are not changing. I don't sure. know if it's on the mind. I don't know. Which slide are you on, Mr. Not changing. The very first one. It's what? still on the front. Okay, is it now changed? Maybe I can. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, it has. Wow, sorry about that. So this is a slide that I've just talked about uh, where students, uh, um, we can see a student uh, planting her spinach seedling and they were working in groups. And I, I mentioned that when we started this project seven years ago, I think now it is eight years ago in 2013, we were working with 250 students of senior one, and we had half an acre of land to work on. And we started with 150,000. And the key people in the implementation of the project, we had a volunteer, we had uh, two teachers of agriculture, and then we could ask for part-time workers to come and help us uh, do some work that the students couldn't do or students were not around to do it. Um, I hope now we have moved on to the second slide on your side. So what was the methodology? Uh, we had students divided in two groups. So it is key that these students belong to uh, group, different groups and then they can organize themselves. We get leaders for the groups and also leaders for the entire team. It is not, uh, it won't, there won't be any learning if all the work is done by the teacher. You are the leader, you, you coordinate everything. You need to leave some work for the coordination to this. And then um, we, students were, we, for the, because we had limited land, we organized our, plots of land in, um, uh, they were raised beds. So we went into construction of uh, uh, raised beds or establishment of raised beds that were 10 meters long and then one meter wide. So this is what the students were working with. And the project model that we worked with was called Earn As You Learn. So this project model, students were getting 50%. If for example, they, they had a, a cabbage garden, there are three of them. And we saw that the cabbages, let's say uh, 10, there were 10 cabbages and we saw them at 10,000. So the group would have earned 10,000. So we give them 5,000 and then the school keeps 5,000 for sustainability, buying of seeds at uh, the next time. But we just don't give it cash. We first pull it in a, in a, in a collect it in a pool and then we see what can be done at the end of the project. So we take records and see uh, how much has been earned as a project. And then we can decide on what to do uh, at the end of the project. Uh, but it is important that uh, students earn from what they do. Um, many of uh, the challenges why people are not supporting school gardening is because teachers take on everything. You eat the vegetables free of charge. Students don't take anything at home. So we need to change the way how this is done. And then how we worked, students uh, uh, were, were, we had a timetable. Of course, we couldn't take all the 250 students uh, to the farm at once. So these were like four streams and every stream had a day they go to the farm in the week and they would work 
one hour to two hours, depending on the, the activity at hand at the farm. And uh, there was always guidance of the teacher. Uh, for example, in this photo here, we have uh, Mr. Solomon Mukumbia, who is our agriculture attendant at Gaza, agriculture lab attendant at Gaza High School, handing over seedlings to this group of students, and they are starting their garden. So we could always have someone in charge. So we need to see how we do that in our groups, so in our school. So this is, uh, these are some of the project activities that we did. Uh, for example, here, these are students of Gaza High. Uh, and uh, During this time, they were setting their gardens. Uh, someone would wonder, do they do it? Yes, uh, we take them there and then we make them do their work because when they do the sweating, of course the hole is not the right way. Uh, and I know uh, Josephine doesn't like the hole that much, but uh, in a school setting, we need to first engage these guys in the hole. And we want to challenge them to think about how to make work better uh, for the farmers. But we could prepare the land with the students. Uh, some of the preliminary work would be done by um, some hired staff then they could do the planting it is this planting was a must uh, for the different groups then they could do some weeding watering of their crops mulching pruning staking pest and disease control harvesting and then also marketing and sales so the, i'm going to talk more about the marketing and sales so we could harvest these vegetables and uh, it was always very key that we have a market day on the school visitation day. So these students sell their vegetables to their parents. The parents are actually willing to buy these vegetables at a much higher price. Um, I remember one time we had a, veg a, a teach, uh, parent buying a sack of cabbages and then donating them to the school. So that was very, uh, very nice. So we could always have a marketing and selling day to the parents on uh, those visitation days. It can be a class day, senior and parents are coming to school, senior two parents are coming to school. There is a church ceremony. We just have a, a store, we go harvest what we have, and then we bring and sell it. We have uh, people leading the selling and they are, they are in charge of record keeping. So we know we bought, 100 cabbages, each cabbage is supposed to be sold at, let's say 1,000, 2,000, there are records that are made. So all this, there are opportunities for learning. So um, this is a picture that uh, we took, I think this was in 2014. Uh, there is a gentleman here, we can't see him very well, but uh, he was from Naru. So because of this project, we connected with NARO, uh, NACRI, the Namronge uh, Research Station, National Crop Resources Research Institute. Um, and uh, they had a project actually they were undertaking about uh, growing indigenous vegetables. So he's here teaching the girls about uh, establishment of actually management of Nakati, a Nakati plot or Nakati garden. And uh, these are some of the collaborations that schools can do. Of course, here the students were pruning. Um, what we have pruned is can be can be sold or eaten. So, and then they are also doing things like pest and disease control, telling them which diseases are affecting the uh, the nakati or other vegetables. How do we identify those? How do we control those? So, these are some of the key activities that still apply to the different um projects that we are going to do uh, so this is a picture of a student taken while harvesting her uh, spinach of course uh, there, there are those vegetables that are easy to grow and they are very nutritious and uh, uh, for me the leafy vegetables would always bring out the one of the best uh, projects uh, being established and uh, um, so this you can see how beautiful this was there's a lot of learning. We, we need to collaborate with so many teachers. For example, the teacher of fine art can help you uh, design uh, these uh, labels. And uh, the students, your students in senior one, in their art and design 
uh, I hope it is now still at a designer. They can class, they can design these and then print them out and bring them to their, to their, to their gardening project. So I talked about um, selling. So you can see this, by then our club was still called the Young Farmers Club of Gaza High School. And uh, this was, I think, um, oh, the school always had something we call the culture day. And uh, so we were having a sale. So these are students with their vegetables and some other products from the school farm. These are, these are eggs. And for example, if they sold the eggs, again, they would get a commission for selling. For example, if the, the farm was selling the eggs at 8,000, and then for them, they sell it at 10,000, they keep the 2,000 for their club. Again, there is someone in charge of the, of, uh, the selling, they're in charge of record keeping and, key, and also keeping the money. So there are so many things that happen within the project. And uh, for, uh, for instance, we have sold, uh, the farming year has ended. We had something called the farm carnival. So this farm carnival was a celebration of the farming year. There's a lot of work that goes into farming. We all know it, it is tiring, but at the end of that day, we need students to celebrate their energy. So you can see here, the farm carnival is a very simple event. It's about three, three hours. Students come together, uh, we eat, we have a few speeches, then we eat what we have, and then we, we dance for about 30 minutes. And uh, you can see people in their farm where um, someone is putting on gambots, but enjoying the music. These are some of the critical ways of how we can interest young people into farming. Um, you can see the background there. That was, uh, we, we have uh, a street at the farm, the school. Uh, the school has something called a ring road, the road that re, uh, um, moves around the school. So part of the, the section of the ring road that is uh, around the school farm, we call it the farm street. So we have there the farm carnival and uh, students just come, of course, we, we have the students for that project here. And um, you attend by invitation, you just don't come. And um, we eat. Uh, you remember the pool I told you about? If, for example, we had one million uh, pulled together from the profits of the project, then we can decide that, uh, okay, Let's use uh, this one million to organize a party because if we give, for example, every student 2,000, it would not make a lot of sense. But if we use part of that money to buy 100 kilograms of beef, uh, 20 cartons of soda, everyone would happily enjoy. Or we can say, okay, we made a lot of money. Let's donate some of this money to the nearby school. We always had Kadongo, there's a school that belongs to a public primary, uh, primary school, uh, Gaza Church of Uganda Primary School. We could always send them a meal when they are doing their primary living examinations. Uh, from what we have grown at, at the Gaza High School. So things like that would help us uh, uh, implement a successful project. So these are students uh, still enjoying their sweat during uh, the farm carnival. You can see we have beef and uh, some soda, and then they will get into the dancing later on. But very critical is uh, the awarding system. We, we, need, we, uh, we, we need to recognize excellency. We have students that are so devoted to the projects that uh, we implement. Now as schools, but then also as a team, we need to award excellency. And, um, for example, these girls here, one of them was the number one, the second one, and then the third one in how the project was implemented. So we had the staff farmer, we, we, we had different names of uh, we call these people. And it is it gives them, uh, awarding them, makes them feel recognized, but then it motivates the rest of the group to know that, oh, at the end of the day, there's something that we are going to get. Uh, I'll go with it at home. Uh, then I'll, I'll also tell you that um, we have been attending so many exhibitions, 
uh, workshops, seminars, conferences. Um, some of them are high level, they are those five star hotels. It is the students that we take there to do the demonstrations. And when they come and share the stories with the rest of the team, the team feels motivated. Of course, we always take out those that are, we know these are hard workers, they have been with us, but you make sure you don't take the same people over and over again. So basically, that is it. Uh, maybe I need to tell you that key of the things to do, yeah, you need to have a leadership team. So these students here, you see belong to our support system, uh, which is the club, the Youth Future Farmers of Africa, there's a high school chapter. I know many schools here, including Iganga and Toro Girls, they have already the Yofa chapters running, and uh, these help you to implement the project well. These girls go, or the students go to places where you, you can't go, for example, the dormitories to collect their, their, their colleagues to come for the activities. They make the announcements in classes. You can't be to the assemblies. You can't be to, they, they, they can fundraise and stuff like that. So you, you need a support team for that from the teachers, your, your colleagues, the teachers in your department. Uh, you need uh, the teachers, the rest of the teachers, teachers of English, teachers of art, chemistry, because you need to show that connection. And now with the senior one and senior two curriculum, there's a big window for us to, to be successful. But uh, as, we, as I conclude my presentation, here are the key things for, for implementing a successful program. I don't have them on the slide. And um, one, you need support from your administration, the head teacher, um, the deputy head teacher in charge of academics, the deputy in charge of administration, the DOS, you need support from your, from your admin. You need to have a buy-in for you to have a successful project. And then still in the administration, you need to find your influencer, the administrator that will talk for you in meetings where you are not. During my time at Gaza High School, Mr. Ronald Dung would talk for these projects where I, in the meetings where I couldn't be. Uh, so you need to identify the influencer administrator for you. Then you need to get parent support. Uh, parents will only support you when they see their children in these projects. And uh, so, for you to win parent support, please have their children participating. Give the, give the children opportunity to grow. Then have a champion in your school. You see, we can have so many teachers. There are schools that might be having four teachers of agriculture, three teachers of agriculture. We need to find a lead person. I know in Uganda and in Africa, we, we don't like being led, but we need to identify for growth we need to identify someone who is going to lead us. You see like how Moses led the Israelites, uh, things like that. In everything we do, we need to find a leader, give them that opportunity to lead us to the promised land. The other thing that we need to do, we need to have the Yofa club. We need to have a club. That club is going to do for you the work that you can't do. We need to be creative. We need to, be, uh, to keep good records. And it would be nice if the students would keep their records with your approval or signatures um, with you overseeing them. And then uh, I talked about collaboration. We need to collaborate within the department and outside the department. We need to collaborate with the farmers near us uh, in our communities. I told you we could invite, uh, we could actually take students, for example, at Gaza High School, we take them to Dr. Nariima's farm. They get to see new ways of doing stuff. They come back. We could take them to Nakuri. They get to see different things. Or even invite people to talk to these students. Uh, for me, there's a Dr. Barbara Zawede. We used to have uh, our agriculture talk series and uh, we could invite her and talk to the girls, show them the other opportunities beyond just being in the vegetable garden. 
what else can I become in the field of agriculture that is meaningful to me as a person, but also to my community. We need to look for organizations that are, are willing to support us. In every community, there are organizations. The organization can be a church, it can be a mosque, it can be a, a community-based organization, uh, supporting girls, supporting boys, supporting women, supporting schools. So we need to look for those opportunities at the local level, but then also at the national level. We also need to go to, to knock doors. Uh, some of these can be political doors. You go to the local council three, local council five, the mayor, and get support for your program. So we, we need to, support can be from individuals, from parents, from organizations, from farmers. That is the only way that you have uh, a successful project. So ladies and gentlemen, that, that is what I had to share. I hope it brings out a picture. Here I've only talked about the vegetable gardening and it was in plots, but we also had uh, matoke growing, which was uh, a bigger unit. Uh, people allocated uh, different crops, uh, maybe with the growing of um, maize and beans, we might just go for a single block garden and people just grow it and uh, at the end of the day, share profits as they come in. But yes, but one of the key things maybe I need to leave behind is that this project is not mainly is not about making money. It is educational. So let us provide as many learning opportunities to the students as possible. Thank you very much. Um, I, I beg to stop here. Thank you, Brian. And uh, I hope we have all been listening in uh, attentively. I know that uh, it's just been a short uh, presentation, but we'll always have Brian whenever we can so that he can expound on this presentation. I, I want to request Nicholas, Nicholas, if you are there, um, I want you to take us in the Q&A. Members must have, might have questions now for all the three presenters that have come and gone. Uh, Nicholas, are you there? I just want to hear if you are there, Nicholas. Nicholas. Yeah, yes, I'm there. Are, are you able to moderate that session of questions, Nicholas? Yes, I'm there and I can hear you well. Okay, so friends, yes, you can, can either you. use uh, the chat or raise your hand. Nicholas, please uh, take over uh, the session. Thank you so much, Mr. Dungu. And uh, everyone that has presented, Brian, uh, or that we might, we, let's all post our questions in the chat. Then if you need specific person to respond to your question. Are we failing to Please, have Nicholas? We may not have very many people are uh, speaking. So it is only to individual who ask your question. Are you hearing me? Mr. Du, can you hear me? Yes, Nicholas, you are now loud and clear. Yes, I was, John, John, if you can hear, please unmute and ask your question in a minute. Chiyinji, John, I'm seeing your hand up. Uh, thank you, Nicholas. Uh, Brian and Mr. Dungu. I'm John Chiyinji, a teacher of agriculture from St. Joseph of Nazareth High School. Yes, we are very grateful for this innovation. And I hope we shall all embrace this. I think I really appreciate this because our culture was dying out in schools. You realize that after making it elective at senior one, 
Many schools have dropped it. I speak this with the statistics. I think mine may not be a question, but it is an appreciation to the team for bringing this innovation. I think when you, see, you do something feasible and it creates impact to the community, I think those who may think about kicking out the subject more will see the value. I hope the support comes in early. I know we are in a dry spell, but we shall improvise and probably do irrigation. Thank you, Nicholas. That was my appreciation. Okay, thank you so much, John, uh, for being brief and precise. Mr. Dungo, I beg you attend to the first question from the chat. When are we likely to receive the seeds? And then you can, if you, if possible, can also respond to, I think this can be Josephine, how much seeds shall we receive per selected crop? Uh, Nicholas. Yes, Brian. Um, I wanted, sorry, I have a one minute, a one minute video that I wanted to share. Okay. I think I forgot about it. I don't know if members can allow me to show it. It is uh, taken in a garden while students are working there. It is only one minute. Is it okay? Yes, Brian, okay, go, it's okay. Go share your, uh, your volume. You're in the supper. First finish. In Uganda, we don't talk while we eat. <laughs> I first finish this presentation. Can you hear, hear it? And actually did. But, okay, it was fun and it was hard-ish because it was, some of us had never dug before, so we were scared we were going to dig our feet off or hit our feet with a hole, but it was fun. Yeah, we were digging. I never dug before, but not many times. But it was a good experience. experience. Uh, it was nice. I learned a lot, especially measuring and planning where to put the number of seeds to put, holding the manure. It was just a Huge fun. Yeah, I expect um, our seeds to be really big and tall. Yeah, but I really didn't like the part of touching manure. But I'll get used to it with time. I'll become adaptable. All right, thank you very much. We expect to get good yields and a lot of money to Okay. My name is Paul. My name is Naula. Okay. Um, uh, thank you so much, Brian. Who has the video? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think let's uh, run to the two A, two and A before Mr. Dung kicks me out. Uh, Mr. Dung, please may you attend to the first question uh, from the chat, uh, which is asking, when are we likely to receive the seeds? Um, thank you, Nicholas. We did write and say that uh, starting 1st February, we want to see if the seeds can be dispatched. At least that was... Uh, the agreement we had with the Victoria Seeds, but you realize that the schools are spread. We are still going through the modalities of how that seed will be getting to you wherever you are. But starting from 1st February, we want by the 28th of February when all schools have, have their seed. And the quantities of the seed have been mentioned by uh, uh, Josephine. When we share that slide, um, you will be able to write down from the slide exactly the quantities uh, are item. I just want the members to know that this is a, a student garden. We, we are not providing seed um, to do so many acres of land, so many um, acres of maize and so on, but we want seed that will start you off good seed that you will look at and even compare with other seed that you will buy from the market. I submit. Thank you so much, Mr. Dungu. Uh, before you go, uh, please may you answer the last question before I call in maybe Josephine, if she's online. Shall we have some trainings? Uh, this is Hope asking. Shall we have some trainings on making fertilizers and pesticides and other inputs? 
I want to say that together, this is a professional learning community. I hope, and I've been asking members in the WhatsApp group to offer their expertise. Are we going to find some people training us on making, even making compost manure? But we are going to be looking for other support from just seed. We are going to be looking for whoever can train us in something, including the fertilizers and pesticides that are being mentioned here. So let us mention the gap and let us see whether from within we have the trainers or we need to go out and look for uh, that support. And whenever we get the support, we'll always arrange such trainings so that we can take in the little we can. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dungu, and uh, everyone that has sent in their question. Another question which uh, Mr. Dungu has already responded to from Jacqueline, uh, the quantity and the kinds of seeds which we are to get. I think uh, Mr. J Mrs. Josephine from Victoria Seeds already uh, clarified on this, but maybe uh, for the latecomers that joined a bit late, I don't know, is uh, Mr. Jo I mean, Ms. Josephine on? Yes, echo, uh, Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, I think when the slide is shared, uh, it would be clear to all. The seeds that we agreed to start with for agricultural crops, it's maize, bush beans, and soya beans. And then for vegetable seeds, we agreed on cabbage, tomato, eggplant, carrots, kale, and pumpkin. And these will be three grams each per kit. And then we will also offer one farm implement, which is the spray pump. So that uh, the, 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 the kits will go fast very, very as soon as we agreed, at least by end of uh, Feb, every school must have got their garden kit and then the farm implement will be provided uh, as the schools are planned and we are sure that they are taking it seriously. And then I think it will come as well. So that is the, we will start with those few crops as Brian mentioned, we first do our best with these few crops. And then in the forthcoming seasons, we can either expand or maybe uh, increase the, the quantity of seed to, to match the size of the, of the, of the school farms. Thank Mark. you so much. Uh, okay, so sorry, sorry about that. Uh, and before maybe uh, you go, Josephine, you would clarify another question about the spring Spraying pump, that's initially something we are not yet reflected in the registration, uh, the Google document. So some person is asking you clarify again on that, please. Yeah, uh, what we realize is especially for vegetable crops, there is no way that you can take a whole season without spraying. So for it to be successful, maybe some schools already have spray pumps and they don't need it, but uh, as Victoria Seeds, we are willing to support the schools without spray pumps with a spray pump so that at least, even though there may be some form of limitation, the vegetable crops will turn out well. As Thank you. The, uh, yeah, the pesticide to be used, I think that is something that uh, we cannot resolve right now because as we agreed, there are uh, organic pesticides that uh, mm. we, they can use, but also the inorganic one that uh, can be procured. So it depends on what the options and the resources of the schools are. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Josephine. Somebody is asking here, which, uh, which I, I believe you do have, uh, does Victoria Seeds Company have tomato seeds resistant to bacterial weed? I think they need to hear from your mouth, please. Maurice, are you, is Maurice Ogwal in? Can you respond? Yes, I'm available MD and everybody. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, Victoria Seeds at the moment, um, we have so many varieties of tomato at the moment, uh, but we are right now trying to, there are other varieties which are ongoing under trial, but there are those which have already succeeded. Uh, uh, it has shown some resistance towards bacterial weed. 
which those are the varieties which we feel like really giving to the community, okay, to the school, okay, for the school programs to be operating well, and then at this at the end of the day, they succeed. Because that is the biggest challenge with bacterial wheel, is the biggest challenge in the solar family. Right now, innovations are now coming up to address those challenges. And that's why we have done very many kind of trials on the varieties which we have. Others, we have already eliminated them, and others, we are ongoing with them because they are really showing some positive results again as bacterial wheel. So the issue of bacterial wheel should not be a great concern or should not be a big worry now. When it comes to tomato and even green pepper at the moment, we are really having them plus even eggplant. I hope I've, I've already answered something. Yes, you have, uh, Maurice. And maybe the other thing is when you see we have said tomato, we are not only going to give you one tomato variety, and that's why we said three grams. There may, there will be OPV and I believe one hybrid. So when the full full the full uh, kit package is uh, properly uh, the developed, I think we will share with you latest uh, next week. So it's not just one one variety for tomato especially there should be at least three varieties minimum back to the moderator nicolas are you still there yes can you hear me yes we can hear you Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Josephine and the team uh, from Victoria Seeds Limited for responding to those questions. Christopher here is asking, uh, make, uh, can we move further to making biorationals to have skilled learners in pest control with all our local materials? I think uh, quickly, Christopher, this is uh, a new project. We are bringing you closer a learning, a learning platform opportunity for you and your students. You are free to experiment with it as much as you can but we also love in the idea of teaching students uh, pest control with our local materials. So I think uh, as Mrs. Josephine had talked earlier about uh, the organic fertilizers and biopesticides, that's something which can look, we can look at uh, pursuing maybe in the near future. And then briefly to Mr. Dungu, Alex here is asking, uh, are there some cost sharing the school will have to do uh, along transportation or any other? because our administrators may need to know for effective planning. I think to answer Alex, um, like the, um, Josephine has said, the kit is being developed. So then we know um, the quantity to be transported, but we are also mapping out the schools on the map and looking at it. So very soon, if there is any cost sharing about transportation or picking this kit from a certain place, central place in a, in a region, we will be able to alert, um, alert the members. For now, we think that there is a taxi, there is a bus. Mr. Yes, Mr. you can hear me. Are you sure? No, 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 I'm speaking from another end. You can't hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Mr. Renard, you are clear. We can yeah. hear you. So uh, I was just saying that for now, for now we think that we will be able to reach as far as we can, but we'll let you know, especially those at the far end um, where- Yes, I can hear end. you. Sir. Go ahead, Mr. Yes, I have said that uh, if there is any cost sharing we need with the school, we'll be able to alert them as soon as possible. Let us develop the kit and let us look at the map carefully. What I note on this call, there are members who are joining in, but maybe they are not even registered. I've been yeah. sharing the WhatsApp group link. Please join the WhatsApp group link so that we, we do the final registration. Like I think somebody um, is coming in from very far. 
and we had not seen that on our map as yet. So let's do that so that we have the final uh, registration by tomorrow. And, and then uh, Victoria Seeds will be able to analyze this and see what we need to do. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mr. Dungu. It uh, looks like we have exhausted all the questions coming in. But please, if you have any more questions that to come along as you're interacting with your administrators or as you think about the project, feel free to reach out to Brian, to Mr. Dungu, and myself. We shall always be able to respond to those. Uh, at this moment, I think uh, Mr. Dungu had assigned to me. And uh, oh, let me check in the chat. OK. Uh, uh, the last question, I'm doing, but shall we be able, shall we be able to be facilitated with some materials to make organic fertilizers um, from St. Apollo Cassisi Primary School? Yeah, so Mr. Dunga, uh, you may wrap up with this question and then uh, I can consider the Q&A question, I mean session uh, closed. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Nicholas. I think to the, um, the question on uh, um, fertilizers. This is a professional learning community. Let us share this in the WhatsApp group. Probably somebody knows the common, common materials usable. You may not need somebody to facilitate you to do certain things. So let us look for um, easy to find materials and be able to teach ourselves that but as i said as we go on when we meet some people with the new technologies and they want to support us we shall bring them on board the most important thing is to work in a network brian brian are you there if you don't mind we we are taking any um words of encouragement and worries anybody who has any excitement or any worries to, to mention now so that the others can help them with the answers. I am here, Mr. Dungu. I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Um, I'm Just here. to moderate the session. Friends, okay. we are now in the session for you to encourage others by um, giving them words of encouragement to move on or to mention some fears you have for your project in your school so that we take note, but also we find some probably remedial action for you as a team. Um, Mr. Dungwa, let me ask um, uh, Peter from Toro Girls School. I know he has been uh, part of this movement since 2013. Uh -huh. uh, Peter, can you please share with the group what, what, what do you do at, uh, at your school and uh, Yes, how far you are. And then I'll also ask um, Isova, Jime, um, uh, then I also Hope and Mary, Hope from Mbara, um, Chapa, I, I think it's Mbara High School, yes. And then uh, Mary from um, St. Mary's, St. Mary Hill High School, yes. Hello. Yes, yes, Peter, you are on. You're loud and clear. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Peter. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, all, we all know what COVID has done. But uh, before that, we had uh, our farm. And up to now, we have our animals. Uh, there are animals, but of course, there were very many. We had to reduce the number from 18 up to 8 because of the other management costs. But we also, we have, as a school, we've also introduced Pigare. And uh, our Pigare basically were dealing with, the, we breed and sell to the farmers. We're dealing with the Cambra, we're dealing with the large white, and then we cross, we're dealing with the Duroc, then we sell to the community around. But all of this is being managed. We have some technocrats managing, and then most of the activities are done by a girl child. Leave alone that, we're also dealing with the vegetable production. And we had moved on well before lockdown, the manifesto. Nevertheless, we have not given up. 
Victor, Victoria Seeds has again resurrected our hopes. Uh, last week, this week, I've been talking to my students and they are so eager and we are eagerly waiting. But uh, the approach for me I'm using, uh, for the approach we are using in Toro Girls, we want the girl child to own it. Yeah, the school can, can uh, put all the costs, but dealing with the girl child, also want had, we also want that child to contribute maybe 1,000, 2,000. And when a child knows that her money has been, she has put her money into something, the enthusiasm she will put into the project is much more than if it was just a matter of participating. After all, the school has catered for all the costs. So we're looking at a, a child cost sharing with the school. It is not that the school cannot, but we want that her involvement into the project. Then, uh, as a school now, as a department, we are into organizing them in terms of streams, which stream should deal with the poultry, which stream should deal with the pigare, which stream should deal with the livestock, which stream should deal with the vegetables. And even in vegetables, we are going to deal to, to look at various types of, I mean, uh, vegetables and in terms of uh, plots. And in this, it is not just a mother. If you have been put in a diary, that is for you straight and for, for, forever. No, we shall keep on rotating. We want a girl child to learn all around all of these activities. Then I was also of the view to us, you know, some of us, or maybe <clears throat> the activities we do, much as we are documenting them individually, but I would also love Dungu. Maybe I don't know if it was mentioned because my network was on and off. If it was mentioned, I would also love that whatever we document as individual schools should be in position to be put into a, a, a book. We should just make a book. Which book should be generated and then sent back to those individual schools and nearby schools as one way of motivating that, okay, if um, Iganges is doing it like this, I think uh, Mbarra High can also, I think, can learn a leaf and do much better than Iganges. Or, we learn the way other schools are doing it as one way of motivating us and then as one way of bringing on board the nearby schools. If activities are, are documented by, I mean, school by school, this is what Terogas is doing, this is what Ganges is doing, this is what Gayaza is doing, this is what, it's a motivation to the rest of the schools. Otherwise, we need to have almost all schools on board. And now we as being the ambassadors of the project, we must sell the idea to the neighboring schools. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter, for uh, that uh, enlightenment. I'm glad you are doing a lot of work at uh, Toro Girls School. Uh, we acknowledge your effort and enthusiasm in uh, making it a good learning environment for the girls there. How I wish you could use the farm to, like you've said, to interact with other schools so that they can come and, uh, and, uh, and, and visit and also learn using your, your facility. I want to say that uh, we want, moving forward, we want to use the YOFA platform to build it into a national secretariat maybe and TEFA so that we can always capture these things, have them online, and we can always uh, share the links so people can come and learn. Also, this uh, WhatsApp group, people can always share their success stories and maybe challenges so they can get solutions. But um, away from that, uh, Olivia wants to make a clarification on organic fertilizer making. Uh, I don't know if uh, you can unmute yourself and speak to us in a minute, please. Olivia, you only have one name to your gadget, so I don't know the second name. Okay, uh, looks like Olivia is not on, but like Jacqueline. I'm yes. Okay. I'm yes, Olivia. Now, very, this is Dumba Frank. Very interesting. How this is Dumba you? Frank? Yes, Frank. Yeah, this, this is Dumba Frank from St. Apollo Cassisi. Yes, please. Primary school. Okay. Teaching Isaiah. Now, for, for us at our school, we got a chance and we were taken to massacre by, by our organization, Fields of Life. And we were able to, to learn how to make 
a variety varieties of organic fertilizers so in in those fertilizers had like bokash which can which can last in soil for for a good time and the other fertilizers but in order to make them we uh, we needed to be with some money and at and at this time for us for sure uh, we are somehow poor but we needed to get some money to buy those materials for example sukari guru and other things maize bland so as to to cut out those things and they better because we have ever tested them what is it okay thank you uh, frank for that um for that uh, clarification um maybe i'll need to tell you that uh, in this project uh, maybe until we get another partner we are not uh, we don't have any 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 resources money to give to schools but i know of uh, fertilizers we can make without uh, buying anything uh, organic fertilizers and we shall share i know there are other people in here but uh, for now I would love to hear from Mary Jacqueline from uh, Mary Hill High School. If she... Mary, can you share about your project? Okay, as we get to hear from Mary, Ogwang Basil has his hand up. Can you please uh, use one minute to share your, your concern? Okay, thank you, the colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I must appreciate the presentation that has been uh, put forth forward. And uh, my request to I think use the name Olivia. My colleagues in the primary who talked about the, uh, making the pesticide and the raw materials. I feel it is very important if you could do, provide us with the literature, because the literature can make somebody see how to get the alternative or request for the materials. That information is quite important instead of uh, first grasping for the support. Thank you very much. Otherwise, you are very much appreciated for the knowledge. We shall uh, keep sharing whatever little we have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ogwang, for that clarification. Yes, uh, if uh, Frank, you can share that uh, some knowledge about what you 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 got engaged in, and you don't have to do it here. We can uh, you can do the follow up in our WhatsApp group. I don't know if there is anyone else willing to share uh, their success story. Um, is uh, Isova still on? Looks like Isova dropped. Yes, uh, Mr. Okwangan, I know you are doing great work in uh, Lila. Can you please unmute and share with us? If you are still on Okwangan, Simon, my senior from Chambogo University. Hello. Yes, uh, Simon. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Simon. Yeah, thank you so much. I've been following everything except my network has been disturbing, but uh, I'm so glad that this is what, how far, Brian, you have brought agriculture in all schools. I'm just so happy and uh, I'm very ready waiting for that chance to start it in this place because uh, I don't know if, if I have ever told you that uh, this school where I am here in Lira is just a brand new school that uh, I'm just bringing in everything, such project of agriculture, and I will really be uh, in, in need of you in supporting me, because even I have the intention of uh, using this school to organize a national farm camp, like the one at Gayaza in Northern Uganda. Because I remember one time we talked about having one in Northern, and I would really like to have it organized here in this school, St. Gracious SS leader because I see uh, all the structure, the facilities can support the, the farm camp. 
I only need some guidance from you and then how we go about uh, uh, organizing it. And in the near future, we should be able to have a farm camp here in Northern Uganda. Thank you for the opportunity to say something, Brian. All right, All right. thank you so much, Simon. I am uh, I'm very happy that uh, you want to organize uh, a regional farm camp in Northern Uganda and you want to take lead, we appreciate that. Um, and hopefully in one year, we can have that uh, uh, done. Thank you so much, Simon. We, we, we thank you for being a great champion uh, for uh, inter having students practically taught agriculture. I don't know if anyone else has uh, something to say, but we are left with eight minutes to end uh, our meeting. Yes, uh, Ogwal Mollison, I think. Your hand is up. Please uh, unmute and say something. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And I'm again happy. There is something which I have already picked a lot. And it's like uh, I can see schools are now coming up to do more of the extension and breaking up the bondage. I'm, uh, I'm an agriculturist by profession, but I'm also now a teacher. I can say for me, I teach an adult. You people, you always teach the young generation. I'm always teaching adults because I, I am always into extension much. And uh, besides that, I also work for Victoria, which is not bad. So the experiences are there. And I can see this brother of mine who is in St. Graces. I'm telling you, just feel free. I know we shall make the basis of the platform. We shall exhaust and share experiences here and there. I wanted to say something concerning the presentation from Gayaza, something very nice, interesting. With my experience, practically what I have seen, most of our, like when you come to other extension staff, government-wise, I take a look at the things which are more theory. We have been undergoing a lot of theories everywhere, but what, or oh, the tactic Gayaza is using, and the tactic this, uh, this school of Tororo is using, I, and I have no doubt it will be a very good way for us to make the next generation become a little bit, little bit more change by breaking up the bone. There's a bone of the primitive, oh, the, okay, the old generation, and then now the, the young generation. So by using that tactic, automatically we shall have uh, a, a, a more successful and a viable generation coming up in the world of a uh, market in the line of agriculture, agribusiness or farming as a business. And also the, the slogan of seeing is believing is what Gayaza has done and is what Gayaza, Gayaza is doing. I know what Gayaza will also be doing is the same. Seeing is believing because when students actively participate like the way they are doing, automatically it remains inside their brain, even if you don't go and read anything, automatically remains and they can go and practice them. Automatically, those are the people, all those are the students who at the end of the day, they may lack a lot of nothing now, but they will have a lot of, a lot of things to go and do and experiment in their villages. And then they also bring changes. What we are doing is just like a very small piston, but we are, they will be moving in a very big chunk, like pushing the very big trailer outside the community now. Much as we have the target of the school, but in the long run, I can see there is a projection somewhere I've already seen. So thank you, Aki. That's what I wanted just to comment and then say, just to give us a word of encouragement. I too, I have also worked and seen so many impacts which are always there. Seeing is believing and they are now, they will believe and they have believed a lot. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Ogwal for uh, those uh, kind remarks. Um, I, I believe so many schools are doing quite a lot, but uh, from I want to pick from you that uh, we need to break the, uh, I think it's the, we have no connection between schools and the communities and we need to break that and create a bridge between schools and communities. Now, schools we are created to have an impact on their communities, but for a long time, that impact has not been happening. So it, let's use this project to create a bridge between our schools and the communities where we are. 
Uh, Mr. Dungu, I think uh, my uh, session is done and we have four minutes to the end of this, but I see, okay, uh, there's a comment by Jacqueline Namiro in the chat. I, I ask everyone to go there and read it as I give the microphone back to Mr. Dungu. Thank you so much. Okay, um, thank you, Brian, for taking us through this session. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the start of a long journey. As Brian said, since 2013, we are at it. And the most important thing is to get the school gardening programs back in shape, but also to mobilize support for the schools. So as you work in your agriculture department, please look out, look out for other departments that are going to make use of your gardens for learning, because there is the new curriculum that you want to support. And when you bring it from that end or from that model, then the administration will find it very important to give you the support needed. The different subjects need to set up projects. It is you to give them room for projects, but you need to think now, how will the mathematics department use my garden? How will the physics department use my garden? How will the historian, for example, use my garden? These are critical discussions that you need to engage with. They are not simple, but within our platform, the WhatsApp platform, we need to talk so that we build this knowledge. We are going to look for whoever we can find to support this program. I want to tell you that we have been talking to the Permanent Secretary Minister of Agriculture and is very passionate about school gardening. If we start off, well, if we write our records, if you take pictures, if you keep sharing within the WhatsApp group, of course, we are going to train you on how to present these reports and pictures online on other platforms. If we can begin documenting work within schools, then we can talk to FAO, we can talk to Minister of Agriculture, we can talk to all of these support teams that have been working with us on the farm camp schedules so that they can come right from school. And then we can have the regional camps happening. Nothing is impossible, but everything has to be unlocked by us at that school level. This program is for you and it is you to make it. No one is going to come from far to make it for you. You're going to build it further than the little we discuss at this point. Before we get into the closing mode, I see Nicholas's hand is up. Nicholas, please. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dungu. I hope everyone can hear me. I still want to emphasize your point of saying something. There are very many people outside there that are willing to give a hand to our school projects, to our schools, the organization that I work for, Field of gives 10,000 US dollars per year to 10 schools to start up agricultural projects. But before you get that money, the question is, what have you done in your school? Many people are very excited about presenting the challenges of lack of money, but then they cannot look around to utilize the small fields that are in their schools. So this project is giving us a very unique and big opportunity to kickstart our agricultural departments. And as we have something to present as a group, as individuals, Schools, many people are there waiting right, to see something be done. Will come up, will come on board. Schools that have done something, Gayaza can testify, Iganga can testify. Other schools that have tried something in their schools have. Sometimes you may not benefit as a teacher, you may have time as administration, but the schools you are getting, the experience you are getting out of that will surely not leave you as a teacher the same way. So I get to utilize this opportunity make sure we support our project to succeed, regardless of whether there is money or not. Let us try something going to attract other donors and funders to fund our projects. Thank you so much, Mr. Doom. Could you also speak about GLAG, if you want to invite us to prepare for GLAG? Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the, oppor for the opportunity again. So there is a, a global network of agriculture educators uh, called Global, Ag, global Teach Ag Network or Global Teach Agriculture Network. So 
It's a network of agriculture teachers from the United States of America and over 40 countries across the world. Secondary teachers and educators at tertiary levels. So this network brings close, uh, I mean, uh, close teachers, lecturers, tutors together to share experience and uh, knowledge on how they can manage uh, their classes and teach agriculture better, but also provide them a platform to collaborate on projects in their classroom. So imagine collaborating with a US teacher uh, with your classroom and you help each other on your classrooms. You present, you teach his her or students and then they also teach your students. And then you have your students have kind of an exchange experience via the digital platform such as Zoom. So last year, we had 20 teachers that stood over paid for and su supported with data to attend the GLAG conference. Uh, so it will be starting next month, uh, February. And Field of Hope, again, is going to be paying for our agriculture teachers in our network. We'll be sponsoring them with their data to make sure that they go out there and learn about leadership, about how they can foster and uh, cultivate leadership in their students, how they can network on projects. GLAG also has an opportunity to provide you with funding for school projects. So for those that think big, and uh, wish to grow beyond their spheres of influence in your district or sub-county. I encourage us, when the time for registration comes, please register to attend. Field of Hope will be covering the first costs and your dietary fund. In addition to your school garden project, I think this year would be headed to big heights. Thank you so much, Mr. Domo. My name is Nicholas for Field of Hope. Thank you, Nicholas. Ladies and gentlemen, we must end here. Oh, the other thing, we'll, the, 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 yes. the, the other thing I forgot, Mr. Dungu, to do, uh, we shall sponsor. As long as the agriculture teachers in the network, we are looking up to like a hundred teachers. Yeah, so whoever is interested, you can register. Okay, I'm sure the new schools here are asking themselves how they can join food of uh, hope network we are bringing us uh, many opportunities to you so that you join uh, networks from here so please prepare i'm sure in the whatsapp group nicholas will also give us more information when they are enrolling um, new schools ladies and gentlemen it's been a pleasure hosting you for this um, two hours workshop there is a lot we have learned there is a lot that we have uh, that has opened um, our minds and we need to work hard at this. I want to say that uh, we are happy to have um, Victoria Seeds Limited. We abbreviate it as VSL. We are happy to have Brand. Brand, you didn't tell us, where are you calling from and what time is it in your country? <laughs> Okay, thank you, Mr. Dung. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling in from USA, United States of America. I'm in the state of Montana. I am here at the University of Montana uh, doing my master's degree in agriculture education. I started my classes last week on Wednesday. Um, because of the work I have been doing at Gaza, that's why I am here. I am here, I am not paying any money to be here. I am learning for free and uh, I'm coming there, back there to change things. Uh, people always ask, where do I benefit from in these projects? Well, <clears throat> the benefits may, uh, we always had this saying at Gaza High School, opportunities come covered in the overall. I remember one time when I, I was starting as a coordinator for the gardening project at Gaza High School, someone walked to me and asked me, now you a graduate, why are you wasting time in those gardens? What benefit are you going to get from there? I wish one time I can get to meet this person and uh, tell them um, the benefits I've got from just that simple project. I, I believe that when we do something very well, we get rewarded. So Mr. Doom, I'm, I'm, for, I'm calling in from Montana and um, right now it is 9 a.m., 9 in the morning. 
So we are 10 hours late. So yeah, I had to wake up at six so that I'd be part of this meeting. Thank you so much. Okay, um, thank you, Bran. Maybe two years later, somebody will say that your words on this event uh, on the 26th day of NRM 36 years moved them and they will be doing something even greater than what you are doing. I want to ask Vivian, Vivian Apio to lead us in a closing prayer. Vivian Apio. Vivian Apio, can you pray for us? I can say the closing prayer. Okay, thank you, thank you. Loving Please Father. Up. Rogers, go on. Rogers, go on. Yes. Loving Father, we thank you very much this evening. We thank you for giving us life and for allowing us to participate in this meeting. We have benefited a lot. We pray that you give us strength, that we continue serving our country and serving our children and building our generation, especially in the field of agriculture. Help us give support to everyone and life to see greater things that we are hoping for in the future of agriculture in our country and the whole world at large. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Rogers. And we shall try to review the situation two weeks later, but let us keep on WhatsApp and let us keep sharing. With that, we want to wish you the best and let us keep working and start on our garden projects. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.